1969, this laser was cutting edge, and industries were just beginning to realize its power. Today, lasers come in every shape and size, and it would be hard to find a discipline that doesn't benefit from laser technology. So it might surprise you to know that when the first laser was built in 1960, few people really knew what to do with it. In fact, it was often referred to as a solution looking for a problem. That may be because the man who came up with the idea wasn't looking to build a precision surgical tool or a high-tech manufacturing device. He was just looking for something to help him out in the lab. After working on microwaves and radar technology during World War II, at t Bell Labs physicist Charles Towns dove into the field of spectroscopy, documenting interactions between radiation and matter, the essentials of quantum physics. In spectroscopy, resolution improves as radiation intensifies, and it wasn't long before Towns was looking for a device that could produce shorter wave radiation than the vacuum tube oscillators he was using in his lab. In 1951, based on a theory set forth by Albert Einstein more than 30 years earlier, Towns theorized that he could produce an intense source of radiation by simply stimulating molecules inside a resonant cavity. Three years later, he built a type of molecular amplifier capable of emitting microwaves of greater intensity than any vacuum tube oscillator in existence. He called it a maser for microwave amplification by stimulated emission of radiation. The maser is the precursor to the laser, whose output is of an even more intense radiation at wavelengths so short that they are in the frequency of visible light. The first working laser was built in 1960, and by 1969, when the film you are about to see was produced, the world was only just discovering what this remarkable device could do. Enjoy the film. Science fiction? Well, yes. But today there's a very real happening in science that reads like fiction. A created beam of light, so intense, so controllable, and so versatile that the future promises lasers unlimited. Ordinary light, as we know it, appears as one color. But by sending a narrow beam through a prism, we find that it contains various colors, each with a separate wavelength. The light from a laser, on the other hand, is a light of only one color, or roughly one wavelength. And when focused, it can provide a powerful knife-sharp beam which science fiction quickly adapted as the ultimate weapon. Real science had developed a weapon of their own, and the laser became a tool for the good of medicine. Their weapon provided a remedy for those who came to regret an impulsive visit to the tattoo parlor. Utilizing the laser's ability to store and release its energy in a single pulse, doctors at the University of Cincinnati adapted it to deal with skin abnormalities. The laser vaporizes the tissue containing the dye with a few painless treatments. Developing the laser into a practical tool has taken years of experimentation. This early model demonstrates how it works. Molecules of gas confined within a glass cylinder are electrically stimulated and amplified between two mirrors, one of them partly transparent. The energy builds up and escapes through the transparent mirror as coherent light, or light of about one wavelength. This light amplification by the stimulated emission of radiation was shortened to simply laser. 
As laser technology advanced, so did its versatility. It was made longer, shorter, and eventually adapted to miniature electronic circuitry. The power was increased, and new methods of producing the beam were developed. Scientists were quick to share their progress with industry and medicine. At New York's Columbia Presbyterian Medical Center, diseases of the retinal blood vessels, one of the leading causes of blindness, could now be treated painlessly with a laser. By carefully focusing the beam within the eye, the laser safely destroys abnormal blood vessels before hemorrhaging occurs. Corbin, Kentucky witnessed a new twist in laser applications where it was adapted to keep track of railroad cars. Each car was identified by a series of reflective strips whose spacing indicated data on the car. A small laser projected its beam off an eight-sided rotating mirror and received back a coded beam from the reflecting tape. As the last car passes the beam, the coded information is automatically transmitted to a master computer. Finding a better way to do a job produced an innovative use of the laser at Western Electric's plant in Allentown, Pennsylvania. Here, a pulsed laser is used to score thin film electronic circuits with an accuracy and smoothness unobtainable by other means. A numerically controlled table automatically positions the glass for scoring. When the process is completed, the individual circuits are easily separated by hand. At Boeing Aircraft, the laser went to work on the new 747 supercapacity jet airliner. The precision alignment demanded by its massive wing and control surfaces brought the laser into play as a form of transit. The unerring beam provided the ultimate alignment tool to meet the demanding tolerances of aircraft production. Science fiction combined the laser and flying saucers as a futuristic application of the mysterious light beam. The laser's future holds far more innovative uses than even science fiction might possibly imagine. Research has produced an experimental laser knife which is being tested on laboratory animals by doctors at the University of Cincinnati. The knife's ability to cauterize as it cuts offers great possibilities in surgery where hemorrhaging is a factor. Research scientists at the Bell Telephone Laboratories have long been seeking more efficient ways of storing and processing the vast amount of information required for future telephone switching systems. This has prompted continuing research into the laser's coherent properties which make it ideally suited for use in memory storage and sparked renewed interest in a unique three-dimensional recording made without a camera or lens called the hologram. The exposure is made by splitting the laser into two beams, one illuminating a photographic plate, the other reflecting off the subject to the plate. The subject is positioned in front of the plate and an exposure is made with laser light. The plate is developed by standard means, but reveals only a visual interference pattern produced by the two laser beams. By illuminating the hologram with a laser beam and viewing it from behind, 
a three-dimensional image is reconstructed. This is possible because information about the subject is recorded throughout the hologram. This property enables vast quantities of information to be stored within the hologram. Additional research produced the white light hologram. It can be viewed with ordinary light. The apparent movement of the object is the result of the viewer looking from one side of the hologram to the other. In the search for additional communications paths for the future, Bell Labs scientists are investigating the laser as a possible medium for the transmission of voice, picture, and data signals. The beam from an invisible infrared laser is passed through a special man-made crystal which converts the beam to visible light. The crystal can also modulate the beam into short pulses which can be used to transmit information. Someday it may provide millions of additional communications channels. Another experimental method of the transmission of communication signals by laser is pulse code modulation or simply the abrupt turning on and off of the beam at speeds undetectable to the eye. Once the problem of transporting the laser's beam over long distances protected from atmospheric interference is solved, millions of new communications paths will be available. For unique services of the future, like the picture phone, which may one day, when linked with a computer, do our arithmetic, or give us the latest stock quotations. As the laser's beam probes skyward at NASA's Space Flight Center, a new conquest lies on the horizon. For here, the laser will be at work tracking, communicating, and exploring in the vast reaches of outer space. You and I will become increasingly aware that science fiction is rapidly becoming a reality. And in the world of tomorrow, this tool of today will continue to serve mankind. Thank mm -hmm. you.